Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences, and in it, we're looking at the second online quiz for Chapter 11, which is on correlation and regression. The first question is, correlations using the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient may be uninterpretable and inappropriate if the data dot 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 a are inversely related, b are interval level, c have a nonlinear relationship, or d come from a sample with an n less than 20. The answer is c have a nonlinear relationship. Uh, I'll show you that in a second, but in a inversely related, no, that just means a negative correlation, and, and that's perfectly fine. You know, it's just as likely as a, as a positive correlation. Uh, B, interval level, well, you actually need to have interval or ratio level to do the standard version of the correlation. Uh, and then comes from a sample of n less than 20. You know, obviously we would like to have bigger samples, but this it still works perfectly fine. Um, in fact, I think you only need three data points to actually be able to compute a correlation coefficient. But let's take a look at C here. Um, you need to have a linear relationship. That is the standard version of the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. And now there are other versions uh, that are designed for th uh, things that are, for instance, rank order or that do have curves in them. But those are those are special things, and we're using the standard version, the Pearson product moment. And we've seen this chart before. It's Anscombe's Quartet, uh, and the top left one is the one we're looking for because that's where the data fits into this nice straight line we're running through it. It's not curved, which is what we have in the top right, and we don't have these wacky outliers that we have in the bottom two. Number two, the difference between a predicted y-score and an actual observed y-score is known as the a, well, all of the answers are correct, or b, imperfection coefficient, or c, error ratio, or d, residual. The answer is d, residual. Um, b, imperfection coefficient, I just made that up. Error ratio, um, not a term that we use in this context. Um, let me show you very quickly. Now, the symbol for the residual, um, when you're looking for one, is E, and that stands for error, because it's the error or, you know, in, in your prediction. And the formula here has a little uh, subscript I, and that means for person I. Uh, so you have number one, number two, number three, and so on. And so the error for person I is their predicted value of y, that's what the y with the hat on it, the carrot. Uh, the carrot, like a, the carrot in a diamond, is above the six on your keyboard, also called a, a hat, or if you speak French, it's a circumflex. Um, but that means a predicted value, and that means the space that's exactly on the regression line for, the, for person i. So you take that predicted value and you subtract their actual value, and that gives you uh, the residual. Anyhow, that's the simple. Number three, if the dots on a scatter plot are spread out randomly, the researcher would report the correlation as A, strong and positive, B, weak and positive, C, close to zero, or D, weak and negative. The answer is if they're spread out randomly is C, close to zero. And again, let's take another look at this one. This is where we have scatter plots to go from positive one to negative one, and you see the one right there in the middle is just a blob and that is a zero. Um, there are other ways to get zero. There's some very peculiar patterns that still lead to zero because we're looking for a linear relationship between variables. But if you got a blob, you've got a correlation of zero. Number four, which of the following is an impossible value for R squared? The choices are 0 0.16, 1 0.10, 0 0.36, or 0 0.00. The answer is B, 1.10. And the reason is pretty simple. R squared is simply the squared version of the correlation coefficient. And what I have right here is that the absolute value of R has to be less than or equal to 1. There's no such thing as a correlation coefficient that goes to, you know, 1.10 or minus 3 or something like that. It, it has boundaries between negative 1 and positive 1. And so when you square it, it, it actually all becomes positive. So now it just goes from 0 to 1. And so the R squared is limited to that range, 0 to 1. And so an R squared of 1.10 is, is just impossible. Okay, last one for quiz 2. If the mean of X is 42 and the mean of Y is 72 
and r sub x y that actually it means the correlation between x and y is zero then what is the predicted value of y when x is equal to 30 and your choices here are a 42 b 72 c 0 or d can't be predicted without additional information well this i'm sorry to say is a trick question the answer is 72 which is the mean of y and here's how it works. It's easiest to understand this if we use the standardized variables version of this. So what it, uh, we do then is we have the z-score for y, that's the standardized score for y, that's on the left here, is equal to the correlation times the z-score for x. And you know I don't even know what the z-score is for x, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to bring down the correlation of 0 that's in the second line, and zero times anything is zero, which is what we get in the third one, so my predicted z-score on y is zero. And you may recall that when uh, you have a z-score of y, it means that you have the mean of that variable. So in this particular case, because I know the mean of y is 72, then I know that we would simply predict the mean of y, which is 72 for this particular case. Anyhow, that's it for the second quiz, and I'll see you for the third one in a moment.